Mark Stern, thank you so much for coming on Inner Edison Podcast. I really appreciate you being here today. Yeah, thrilled to be here. Ed. Looking forward to this. All right. So I know we've been talking before we went live. You're in Austin, Texas, which is a great place to visit. I mean, I, I enjoyed when I was there because Steve Sims had a, a speakeasy there, mm. and it was a nice little city to enjoy. But it was the right time of the year to be there. Oh gosh, uh, summer's coming. So it's. Uh, I debated whether or not to get a sauna, and then I reminded myself that I live in Austin, Texas, and then I, so of course, you, I still ended up buying a sauna in the winter time. So, did you get a cold plunge for the summer? Oh, it's cold plunge is coming. That's the next thing. So I'm like, that is the greatest oh, thing. I, you have a cold plunge? I know. I used my pool this last year during the winter as sure. my cold plunge, and I was like, wow, this is perfect. So the problem is now it's too warm. Right, where it's 66 in the pool now getting close you know still too cold to actually enjoy laying in during the summer because we're not hot yet we're only 76 today yeah. like it's up like 80s 90s it's getting up there so it's going to be unbearable but i have a friend i have a friend who lives in dallas he complains about the heat you know the temperature all the time you learn to love it it's better oh, than yeah. chicago i love chicago for the years i lived there but after you know i'm from alabama originally after all those winters i'm like i'm done with it was like the polar vortex winter of 2015. And I'm like, when you drop words like polar vortex, I'm going back to the South. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem with us is we're just so expensive, but you guys went way up in value over the last few years. And the yeah. one thing I always bring up about Texas that people don't really understand is your guys's property taxes. Mm -hmm. um, it, they double every 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. And people don't understand that when they were moving there, they were like, Oh, but it's going to be so much better. Okay, talk to me in a, in a few years. Yeah. I love that. No. But anyway, so, all right, let's back up. So you were used to, you were raised in Alabama, you said? Raised in Alabama. And then you moved to Chicago? Why would was, you go to Chicago? For a little bit. I did undergrad in D.C., moved to Chicago because I had this dream of working on national marketing campaigns in the liquor industry. So, like, when, like, Absolute and Jameson launched new uh, products or new campaigns, I was like, I would love to work on it. I don't know why that was my dream. But did that for years, moved to North Carolina, went to Duke to get my MBA, jumped back to Chicago. And then after getting sick of the winter, moved to Austin, Texas. So it's kind of been a little bit all over. Not been to the West Coast yet. But uh, well, when you come out here, let me know and we'll take you to I don't know if you like wine, um, but Mendocino has like the county has like the best Pinot Noirs in the world. Oh, awesome. awesome. That is my favorite. You know, it's a good, a good wine for any time. Yeah. All right. So I, I just, what, it, how did you get into what you, what I really want to talk about, which is your custom box agency? How did you get to that? Tell me quickly how you got to that. Cause that seems like a unique, yeah, very it's, unique. It's, it was funny. Part of this is I came from corporate and coming from the corporate world, everything's so buttoned up and structured. And then you leave and come an entrepreneur and it's like wild, wild west and completely unstructured. And the game has gotten so much more sophisticated, but I started in the business of uh, building virtual events. This is back in like 2017, 2018. And the thing that I hated about a virtual event pre-COVID was it just felt like overwhelming to sit and watch all this digital content. So when I did my first one, I sent everyone a publication called Entrepreneur Elements that all the speakers that were part of that event were spotlighted in this publication. And then we sent it out. And what ended up happening was everyone who received the publication the speaker started taking pictures, started doing uh, videos to show it off. People started teaching elements from the publication to their community. And all of a sudden it had this sticking point that like you can't show off um, a digital product in the same capacity as a physical. And so for me, it was like, oh, I can send you the tools you need to be set up for success, regardless of what you're trying to achieve in your business. And then we tested it again with another smaller virtual event that we did these unboxings or we basically turned the, the speakers into this entire box set. And uh, it just kind of took off in a weird way. And I'm like watching the recipients who get this box sell my box for me. And that just solidified it. If you have a digital product um, and you tie it with something physical and you especially give them the tools and resources they need to be set up for success, all of a sudden it elevated your product in a way that other people just weren't doing. And it, as we started doing it again and again, people were asking us, how are you doing this? Uh, I actually launched a product to like be like, my business is virtual events. So here's how you do it. Go buy this $27 product. And that took off in a way that people went through this product, teaching them how to, how to do these box experiences. And then on the back end, everyone wanted just me to do it for them. So that kind of was, 
I like built this product to buy back my time and it ended up becoming the business in COVID. When you think virtual events is the way to go, there was something intriguing about uh, these box experiences that we're doing that I killed the virtual event business and went all in on uh, our custom box business. And we've just built a really strong strategic point of view um, and leverage it as a tool to really optimize customer experience, customer journey, uh, to get people results faster, to extend lifetime value, to optimize your sales collateral. There's just so much that came into it that really felt like this untapped zone. No, I think it's a, for people who want to be the authority in their industry, it, it would, it's that extra little thing. That's something I teach, which is how to become the authority in your industry, because I got on radio in 2018, which most people go radio, but it's power talk, talk radio. And that stuff's going through the roof because it's the last free press. And it was a real estate and finance, a community show we did real well. Then I took that in, into lives. And then I was, I wrote a book, but then I was in a documentary in 2021 came out. Um, hacking real estate because of all these different things. Now you become the authority. You have two problems. One, you're too good for a lot of people. You know, you understand what I mean by that? It's like oh, yeah. a lot of my clients are like, oh, he's too busy for us now because he's got all. This. No, the reason I do all this stuff is so you can know who I am and how to educate you. So, but that would be a unique product to add to whatever somebody's doing. Just that little extra Hey, this guy's very professional. He knows what he's talking about. Because I've seen, I could have swore I've seen one of your box. Uh, I mean, a box from a listing agent. Do you have it? Have you done a box for a listing agent? So we've done lots in the real real estate space. It just depends on who it is. And we've done, I think, our biggest categories. I would say uh, lots of coaching programs of like whether it's a business professional coaching, online coaching, uh, lots of info products, lots of SaaS. Uh, and service providers, so doctors, lawyers, real estate agents, you name it, we do, we do it. We try to make the process as easy as possible for our clients because we can help in to end visualize and then we have a warehouse so we can ship it out. So, so you actually do the packaging and shipping everything out also? We want to plug into your business and unlock the entire capability. So not only can you come and help, like we'll get into your business and help you reimagine what's possible. Because uh, if you have a big digital footprint, you tie physical, it unlocks a whole nother dimension. Um, and then we can do all the design and we have a warehouse so we can also do the fulfillment to get it out to market. So we've optimized that process end to end just because otherwise we create new problems. And the reality is one of my biggest failures is we tried to go in and find good strategic partners. But when we want to play at a world class level and you partner with people who just want to be good enough, all of a sudden my business gets pulled down to just being good enough. And so that was like a huge learning uh, that almost collapsed our business. When, when did that happen? 2020, um, we had a partner because I was just getting started. Um, you know, this business has grown so fast, so quickly, and it's grown so fast via word of mouth, but I had to rely on someone for fulfillment. So we could do everything up to fulfillment and the whole warehousing, that whole beast of a product process, I did not want to have to take because like, I just wasn't ready for it during COVID. And we had a partner that was helping us with our builds. And most of our box experiences have like 30 to 50 pieces. When it's assembled, it's like beautiful and elegant. But in uh, this was October leading into Black Friday. They called me up and were like, we decided we don't want to do these types of boxes anymore. We just want to do e-com products. So it's literally you're sitting at this crossroads of we are literally getting into the busiest time of year. Q4 is nuts with Black Friday and Christmas and the holiday season. And now I have this problem that I brought them about 25 percent of their clientele. And they're telling me that they don't want to serve those 25% heading into their biggest season. So that was like, like it's, it's shocking to believe, but the biggest thing that changed, and this is why I'm such an advocate of mentorship and finding the right mentor. My mentor at the time looked at me and I called him up and was like, I, I don't know what to do. I'm done. And he said, uh, this is a two week problem. That's how he framed it to me. He's like, you can solve this in two weeks. This is a two week problem. And I think had he not said that, I then went to work and solved it in three days and was like, this inventory is, it was in the Pacific Northwest. I live in Austin, Texas. If I truly want to control it, it needs to be in Austin. And so that started the process of us, like it expedited my ability to even think about bringing fulfillment in-house. Had that not happened, I don't know if I would have brought fulfillment in-house. And now I look at it as one of our biggest capabilities. It's a fantastic revenue generator. And it's just a great service for clients to bring that capability. But I look back and say, that was the greatest gift almost four years ago that happened because I wouldn't be where I am today had I not activated that and um, made that happen. So what you're saying is accomplishments, I mean, failures helped you accomplish so much more. People are so afraid of failures that 
Um, they 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 change how we do things. It's just it's, uh, 100%. Had like as a business owner, you experience failure after failure. And for me, that one was just one of the ones that uh, was a blessing. It didn't feel like a blessing. It felt like the end at the time. Um, but this is why, like, again, mindset is so much of this game. You know, for me, failure is exciting in the sense of, oh, we get to make it better or we get to try again or we could get to learn from it. So the learning and failure to me is worth the success of the game as well. Yeah, I was because in my industry, uh, our interest rates went up 5%. So it took everything from, you know, to nothing. I mean, 35% of the market is what's that left. That's hardly anything. That's 200 and some loans in our whole county a month. And you take half, a third of those are cash. So you figure there's only a few, no refinance, no nothing. And I was pretty pissed off at this administration because of what they've done because of where we're at because of that. But then I was walking by ready to go into one of these episodes and I happened to look at one of my computer it was going on. It was this uh, Steve Sims. I'd known him for a while. He was talking about one of his friends said, you know, he always looked at, did this happen to me or did this happen for me? And once I heard that, I was like, you fucking suck. Excuse me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, you son of a bitch. And it's true. All those things you have to look at, did this happen to me or for me? And if you take the thing this happened for me, just like the, what you with your side, you this happened for me so that I could change my company the way it should be, right? And that's kind of what people need to look at when these things happen. Well said. I couldn't agree more. Like that was, a, it hurts at the time. But again, looking back, greatest gift. I'm so grateful that happened because uh, we wouldn't be where we are had it, that not happened the way it did. And it was kind of sometimes you just get those kicks that you need just to see, like, are you going to crumble and fall? Or are you going to push through? And I don't know. I just hold that belief that when you push through, there's something better on the other side. So you got to push through. You can't just give up. Well, or you have to change and do something differently. Or you, you know have what to, I mean? yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. pivot into something else. And uh, and that's just you have to figure that stuff out. That's what being in business is. I interviewed Brian Smith who brought UGG to America. And most people don't know he lost the company in those 15 years. He had to get it back. So you want to talk about losing your own company and getting it and getting it back. Now that's hard, man. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. So now you, so I understand. So basically if I have an idea or you help me come up with an idea that will work, right. Say that I wanted, so I'm just trying to get through the process and then you, you guys, okay, we'll take it over. We'll do the, the, fulfillment we'll do everything we'll create the box we'll put it all together what does that somewhat cost for somebody to do something like that so and where we anchor campaigns is customer life cycle three phases you acquire a customer mm -hmm. so we can build a whole uh, physical campaign around acquiring how do we gamify and get them to purchase point or it's delivery you bought my product and service so that takes you from onboarding until getting the outcome of the product or service they bought or is it retention? That is typically recognition, awards. I see you, I wanna celebrate you for hitting milestones or introducing other ways to increase lifetime value. So we look at it and say, is this an acquisition delivery or retention play? And then from there, uh, I mean, from the all we need to know is what is it you're trying to achieve? We can help guide you through the whole process of what is possible and make it as easy as possible for you. Cost wise to your question, um, it really depends. But for us, like for the hard cost of goods, my happy zone for a lot of these box experiences is around 15 to $30 per. Um, and part of it is that we may leverage a box in a lot of our boxes. If you see the size of our box, we get into what, are, what, what do people naturally save? So I know when you read a book, you put it on a bookshelf, you don't throw it out. So you'll see that a lot of our boxes are like the size of a book and we're gonna brand the spine of it because I want you to put it on your bookshelf. And then the repeatable elements of when you play a board game, you don't throw out a board game. Um, you keep it, you keep the box as the container for that experience. So how do we think about the repeat use of that product? Because I want people to use it again and again and have the outcomes of, as to why they bought it in the first place. So this is kind of where like, if I can get you in that 15 to $30 price point, you may say this is box one of four. I just created an open loop that for you to collect the rest of the boxes, you have to stay engaged with your business. You have to keep playing the business game to collect all the pieces. So there's so many different ways that we can engineer that. So that's why I like to see box costs to be a lot lower, even with these boxes that have 30 to 50 pieces. Swag for us, I joke and say that swag means stuff without a goal. So that's where like when boxes get expensive, it's because it's packed with swag. Um, 
And so we try and minimize to say, unless the swag is intentional and, and has a role, stop sending people the hats, the t-shirts, the sunglasses, the coffee mug, unless there's some intentionality to the experience that allows them to connect to you better. So that's that's pretty much it. This is where my happy zone is about 15 to $30 per unit. Now, do people use it a lot for their books? Like when they send, you know, when you do the, you know, they sell you on, okay, I'm gonna ship you my book, you get this, you get all this stuff. And the reason I say that is because, you know, what was his, I don't have his thing, Dan, Daniel. Daniel, Dan. the, is Dan. influence, yes. Yeah, so I, I got his box because he's coming on the show. He sent me the thing. And there was a coffee cup, by the way. Yep. He said, don't, but you just said, don't send coffee cups. So, yeah. And I even told him not to send a coffee cup. So, <laughs> well, I'm going to tell people if you're going to send a coffee cup, make it yeah. a coffee cup, not a tea cup. You and, understand what I mean by that? But like for me, when they're I think smaller, the cup he sent was smaller, not, and there's nothing against that. I just like a bigger coffee cup, a big old goblet. Um, not a the, goblet, just a larger size coffee cup. For me, like if you're going to do a coffee cup, one, is it a connection point back to you as an influencer? Are you going to do monthly coffee chats? Are you going to invite different people? And that's like the unifying mechanism. I'm cool with that. So at the end of the day, if you know you want a coffee mug, it's your box. But what I get excited about is he had a book. And in the book, he's talking about certain ideas to have breakthroughs as you're reading the book. That's what I'm excited about is can we include the pieces to do the activities that he outlines in the book? So you're not like, oh, that's a cool activity let me like go buy all the supplies someday. Like everything's in the box to be able to experience the entirety of that book. So that's no, I, where books and there was different. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it's the best box I've ever seen. So congratulations. Cool experience. Yeah. yeah. That one. I was like, what the heck? I mean, it was at my office and I'm never really at my office anymore. Yeah. Um, because are we ever anymore? Um, <laughs> I mean, you probably are cause you need a, a whole uh, warehouse and everything else, but. I dance. I still work from home or this. I'm in the office right now. So, but yeah, it's not, sometimes I think from COVID, I just needed to get out. I didn't realize like coming from like corporate America and Deloitte where you never had an office and you were always on an airplane. I thought like I'm done with the office setting. And then COVID made me go, I need a place to go. And then I can leave and go back home and uh, separate those elements. And I'll still work when I go home. But like that separation was for me key. Yeah. For, for me, I just don't want to be bothered. And so that's why I work, you know, I, I had a huge studio at my office. I moved to my house and redid a whole room into this huge studio. And you know, so that I could do it from home because I was, once my book came out, I was on so many podcasts at five o'clock in the morning for, you know, in different places. I'm like, I don't want to be at my office at six o'clock at night, seven o'clock at night, five o'clock in the morning. No, no thank you. Totally. Yeah. And then now it's like, if I want to focus on stuff and, and one of the things I learned to do personally is my studio is my desk now. Because I can, in between my podcast, there's usually 20 minutes sometimes. I can get a lot of work done in between there, you know, between the do, the next one. So yeah. that's just for me. All right. You, you're really intrigued with what you have. That is just very unique. And I think you're, you're in a very niche market that's really going to blow up because people need this extra stuff to stand out in, in the world. Yeah. No, we're having fun. It's 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 the craziest business, um, you know, just to see how we've grown so much organically. Had you told me I was going to be in the business of boxes years ago, I would have said you lost your mind. And it's just funny how now it becomes this vessel that can truly become yeah. anything. Yeah, but you're not in the thing of boxes. You're right. It's our vehicle. Um, we're in really it's the customer experience or journey. Yeah, it, yeah you're, you're just yeah, it's the customer experience that you're trying. That's the game you're in, how to increase. It's the box is just what you're putting it in and, and how it's showing up, which stands out drastically. Yeah. I love that you call that out. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You well, it. I'm just cause I mean, boxes are boring, but you don't have boring boxes, you know, so. it's like, have you ever been in a, a California pizza kitchen? Have you ever been in one of those restaurants? Yeah. On the wall, they have the painted boxes, you know, their, their, their pizza boxes, they're all painted and everything. It's kind of like that. It's yeah. very unique. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's almost, it's an art. So the next question is, you should have series. You know what I mean? And then you, because everything behind you that's on your wall is an art piece. Yeah, and every tile, this it's floor to ceiling. There's probably over 100 on this wall, but each one represents a campaign we launched. Each one represents a different box design. When yeah. did you come up with the idea to put that behind you? So when I got the office downstairs, um, I was originally going to turn, I was like, I'd love to uh, like put bookshelves off and almost have, rather than having a bookshelf of books, a bookshelf of boxes um, and just fill that one up. And then I was like, I don't know which boxes to feature. 
And then I was like, let me just try this out because using it, and quite frankly, they're just mixed tiles, you know, that we repurposed uh, with the cover of the top of the box. The second I did it, I was like, this is either going to be too much or it's going to be a, a really cool depiction of what we do. And what I didn't expect is how much of a sales tool it would become. So when I go on sales calls and people see the entire wall head to uh, floor to ceiling with these tiles, um, it instantly like is these people know what they're doing. So that has been what's been amazing to see. And you can see I'm in the CBA lab. This is kind of the center that people when they come and work with us directly, you know, this is what you're seeing with the, the um, neon light behind me. Um, so this is just like a fun interactive space for people to really see what's possible for their business. But yeah. No, I'm just really impressed and it takes a lot to impress me. So yeah. I am I'm sorry. I'm a vet. What do you want? You know? <laughs> uh, I'm a vet. We're, and I'm also thinking, okay, is there, so I'm the president of my rotary this year. And I, my big thing was for helping vets and everything. We did a fire walk for them over a two day event of a fire walk. I'm thinking next year we need something like this for them to have and take with them to remember everything. There's, there's so much we can do. Plus I'm also thinking once my year's over, which is in two months, there's something I could give all my board members that they could keep. Yeah. And it's gotta the, be something. Yeah. And the easy thing to do in that is like, I can't tell you how many commemorative boxes we've produced. And I remember the first time we produced a commemorative box for there was a YouTube influencer. She wanted to celebrate um, when uh, she hit 250,000 subscribers and she has the YouTube medallion. She wanted to celebrate her people for helping like being a part of this journey. And I think we started with 500 boxes and she sold out in like 14 minutes um, because it became this limited edition thing that we did again um, when she hit another milestone. So it's amazing to see how even the simple words limited edition, the reality is everything on earth is limited edition. There's only so many of this water bottle. I bought at HEB in Austin. Um, on Great earth. place. Great store, by the way. Oh, my goodness. When it's we were in Houston, uh, we were stuck there for a couple of weeks and uh, I went there all the time. HEB is like, uh, it's it's weird to meet a grocery store that everyone has an affinity for, but they do a good job with experience. Mm -hmm. uh, they just have incredible customer support. So um, um, well, see, yeah. this is what we did for our, our Firewalk event. It's a 1940 lighter. replica of the Zippo lighter from 1941 that the vets would put in their pocket when they're on their, while they're, you know, deployed to remember home well we did it for that event so we're already trying to do stuff like that i'm also i did a coin for my rotary which has to do with challenge 22 so i'm really into this stuff so now you can just peek me even more so and with that cool yeah. is like coins are so easy to do um the lighter what i love about that is it's a story piece because it also represents like the the fire walking that they did mm -hmm. so there's elements of that when you start to think when you bring story into it um you extend the value of the piece because sometimes some of these pieces, a coin may cost you what, two to three bucks um, to do a challenge coin. They're not that expensive. It depends on how many you get. Right. It's all about volume. Oh, well, yeah. Th this is such a game that the more you get, the less it is per unit, the less you get, the more. Mm -hmm. um, but pieces like that, people hold on to because, again, it it keeps like it holds a moment in time. It's very different than when you just show up at an event and they're like, here's a shirt. To me, that's just stuff. There's no connection. There's no transformation. I didn't go through a journey. It's just stuff. Stuff goes to Goodwill. Stuff gets thrown out. Stuff gets left in the hotel. And so I don't want, if you're going to spend your hard-earned dollars, stop spending on stuff. That intentionality is so important. So basically contact you and you'll help You'll help us create. Yeah. All it is is just asking the right questions and then we can pull it out of you. But this is kind of where it's like, I don't want people to have to the pressure of, well, I don't know what to put in my box. Well, I know what to put in your box because I need to put what represents you. I need to bring you to life in the box because the second I do that, you show up differently. You talk differently when you present it. It just becomes a whole different experience. So what, so here's the next question. Do you order? So say I wanted to do, so my book is very limited. I'd send it to my clients and then people order on Amazon. I, I'm not sending the box to them, but it's people I deal with. And is there a certain number that I want to be able to send out on a regular basis? Yeah, make it worth it or is it uh, a piecemeal as you go yeah i usually say for for quantities uh minimum i like to see at least 250 magic starts to happen when you start to do a thousand or more the reason i say at least 250 is by the time you do 50 or 100 you might as well do 250. usually the price is so high at those lower quantities um, but i will always be an advocate of if you know that this is a game that the more you uh you more units you get the less it is per unit 
the less units you get, the more it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I would rather you go conservative and liquidate because you can always reorder more if you can see how your numbers go. But it it's all depends case by case. Because the last thing I want is you to see, oh, we can get this great price break at a thousand units, but you have no means to liquidate a thousand units. It doesn't help anyone if I have a warehouse of these transformation boxes, these really cool experiences that are just sitting there collecting dust. It doesn't serve anyone. No. And people don't realize when you print something, the more you print, it's not that big of a deal difference between, uh, you know, a hundred more, a thousand, you know, the, it, it's the cost is in the beginning of what it costs to set everything up. And then the print is just extra run. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen 250 units and then a thousand units of the same item being a, like a $6 difference, especially right. with collateral. <laughs> like it's insane to see how quickly when it comes to print price drops so fast. Yeah. Well, it was like these coins, right? When I had, it was like, okay, it was 250 was this 500 was that I'm like, okay, I, I have to do 500. Whether or not I get rid of them all, it's just for ten, you know the price that it was that much more. It was worth it because if you run out, then you got to redo them again. So. Yeah, one of my favorite things to do with coins too is like one of the things that we're starting to get produced is. Do you remember coin boards? Do you know what a coin board is? It's, uh, well, we could have two different. I, I so I deal with challenge coins, and the thing I know about is when things on the wall, you put them in the wall, on, hang them on the wall. Is that what you're talking about? That's one version. The other version is: Do you remember when the United States launched a new quarter for every state? Mm -hmm. um, and you can collect the quarters and you push them, put into them in the some. Yeah. So even that, like we have clients right now that we're testing out, like imagine receiving a piece like that, whether it's a display unit or whether it's an actual coin board and you get the first coin right away, but you have four more slots staring back at you. Part of it is how do we create this open loop to give people something to strive for? People want to naturally close the loop. And this is something big for me. I don't know if you have ever done a Spartan race or if you've heard of a Spartan race before. Mm -hmm. I haven't um, done one, but I've heard of them. I'm doing my next one. It's been years since I've done it. And I'm finally doing it again three weeks in Austin, Texas. Yeah, um, I'm doing but, I'm doing a rock in, in San Diego. So nice. Like what Spartan did brilliantly is when you complete their sprint, which is like a three to five miler, they give you a medal, but then they give you a third of a medal. I actually have it right here. And you can see it. So they actually hang a third of the medal off of the medal you just received. And then they say, hey, it's time for you to go for your trifecta, complete the eight to 10 miler and the half marathon. When I did my first Spartan, I didn't know about the trifecta. And I didn't know, I, like, had you said I'd do a half marathon mud run, I would have said you lost your mind. But they created and engineered the experience in a way that extended lifetime value. For me, they gave me something to strive for. I wanted the trifecta medal. If I have to drag my body across the finish line, I'm getting that last wedge. But for them, it's lifetime value. They're a business. So they found a way to get me to take an action. But through that, I did go through a transformation because I never saw myself as a runner or an athlete in that capacity. And I left that saying, I am an athlete. I can do this. I do belong to this community. Um, and I want to do this again. And I've done it now, what, five times I've got my trifecta. So they have continued to extend my lifetime value to them just by gamifying how they did that. You could do that with coins in a really easy way. Wow. I'm thinking so uh, when I was in the Navy, we, there, we did the Volkslauf down in Southern California, and that was a mud run. Um, that was only, I think, only six miles at the time. But the SEALs would run it and, of course, beat everybody because they wouldn't get in the mud. Oh. They cheated. They'd run along the side instead of getting, yeah. It's like the whole purpose of it is to get dirty and have fun. Yeah. I, when I was doing it back in the 2000 teens, that was pre germs. So that was when germs didn't exist. So everyone wanted to get in mud. Um, but no. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but I don't know. For me, getting money is when in life can you just get money? Like that to me was like the best thing to get covered in mud because it's just not something you now normally do. So that's where I like if they're skimping on it, they're missing out. Like to me, that's the just part of the fun. You get messy, you get dirty, you know, it's heavy, but it's fun. Yeah. All right. So um, what questions do you ask the people? If when we get started, are they, yeah, are there certain questions or they're all different depending on who the person is? Yeah. So everything, anytime we do, like, there's a couple things up front that are really important. Um, when we start to understand what you're trying to achieve, I need to know what's the outcome. So I hire you, I work with you. What is the outcome? And then more importantly, people may be able to articulate outcome. They can't articulate what does success look like for your people. So we need to also define what does success look like? And what I mean by that. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with like the ClickFunnels realm. Mm -hmm. 
They have the two comic club award. Mm -hmm. They've defined success as have you generated a million dollars? If so, you can get this award. The award represents the accomplishment. You know, for me, again, trifecta, they've defined success is getting all three wedges. The reality is it represents something so much bigger. Taekwondo, you may say like you're on this journey to get the black belt. Like if they define success by earning the certain color of belt level, because that means you've achieved a proficiency at that level. You know, it's very black and white. The amount of businesses that I work with, and we've done this well over 150 times, you know, they don't have a clear metric for what does success look like for their people. And so if you don't have it, then I as a customer don't know what have I achieved this level of success. So this is like a yes, no question. Have you achieved this? Yes or no. Did you generate $100,000 in your first online business? Yes or no. If no, you're still on the pathway towards that objective. So that's kind of where when they achieve it, how do we extend lifetime value? We introduce the next thing to achieve because then you like reset the journey. Russell Brunson doesn't say you got your two comic club award. Congrats on doing a million dollars. You're done. If he did that, it stops lifetime value. So then it becomes what's the next metric of success? Well, now you need $10 million or you right. need 25 million 50. So those are kind of the things that I really want to tease out because I need to get really clear on what is the outcome and what is success. Then we go back to the beginning and I want to understand your onboarding process. How do you educate people for the journey they're about to take? Because if you don't educate them well and you just I, I can't tell you how many businesses just throw them in and they overwhelm their people. Overwhelmed people don't want to feel like a failure. So they're either going to refund or they're going to hide because they don't want to be set up for failure. And so this is kind of where we look at kind of those anchors. Once I know those, we can build the pathway and everything gets so much easier. But just clarity on what's the outcome and what's success and how are you starting to onboard people and guide them through that process? Those are two critical points in the process. And you have that, like the amount of stuff you can build off of that is endless. I can show you how to use this as sales collateral. I can show you how to gamify and incentivize your business. I can show you how to build offshoots to create expansion packs to extend lifetime value. But it all is basically using that as the base. I hope that made sense. Totally made sense for me. Yeah. I, I have, I'm, I mean, my background's all marketing. I, I was the, you know, direct mail king in San Diego for years. So, yeah, I love direct mail. I love that kind of stuff, you know, getting right to the person who needs it and how they did it to them and what gets them to actually the right person to make the phone call. So. And I'll even say, like, in my life, like, we, there are things that I will happily guide you, ha happily guide you and like be kind of that mentor role, be the driver. But there's a lot of things in my life that I just want you to tell me what I need to do. There's things that I just don't even want to think about. Just tell me what I need to do. Take my money. Guide me through it. If it's Facebook ads, do not ask me how to do Facebook ads. Um, either do it for me or show me what to do. So this is kind of where if you understand that some people just don't want to do the thinking, define success for them so they don't have to think about it. Or they don't know how to. Uh, I find that I can help other people figure out what they're good at by mm -hmm. just talking to them and, you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, a good friend of mine, Steve Sims, like, you don't know what you do anymore, Ed, do you? And I'm like, no, I don't really anymore. I own a mortgage. I do mortgages. I do inner Edison, helping the brave. I do radio. I do all these other things. And he's like, you, you tell people stories across multiple mediums. I was like, wow, didn't even think of that. You know, and, and it, it takes somebody else to help you through that process. You can sometimes see other people's, what they are good at, but you can't see what you're good at usually. I mean, I literally was talking about this earlier today. Uh, could not agree more. I mean, like I, you get so myopic on your own business or in your own way of approaching things that like, it's so obvious when you look at someone else's business. Um, but yeah, no, yeah. I completely agree. And also you've been doing it for so long. So you're stuck in the way you've been doing it for so long. And you, cause I've been in the mortgage industry for 20 five years or whatever and i do and i change the way i do things faster and better and whatever but it's still the same thing over and over again so mm -hmm. so any way i can make that change and do with all the other stuff i do is what i want to do so yeah. we're going to be talking awesome i love that anything else you want to add mark before we go today how do people yeah. find you yeah people can find the easiest place to go is just customboxagency.com uh top right hand corner you are welcome to request a free consultation meet with a member of the team um, and they can help brainstorm what's possible. But for us, it's just a fun process. It's just how do we get into you and bring you to life in a different way? Um, and um, I don't know, we're having a lot of fun. Um, it's just a, you know, it's a it's a business that I never imagined it would become what it was, what it is. Um, so we just love helping people. Well, and you know, what's amazing is because uh, people had told you boxes would be going away forever, right? 
I mean, I've had people reach out to me and say, um, swag boxes are de declining. And I'm like, well, we don't do swag boxes. So we're only seeing the numbers increase. But right. part of it is just set up people for success. Well, it's different. You're totally doing a totally different thing. You're, you're not a box. No. And, you know, and people don't, they don't understand that. It's more than that. You're just having to put it in a box. Right. I love that you've drilled in on that too. So I mean, got, it's it's very easy. I can see it. It's it, it's art also on top of everything else. All right, Mark. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate you being here on Internet Edison. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate you. All right. I appreciate you too. Everybody make it a great day. Talk to you next week.